in this video, I'm going to actually talk about how you use the graph that you've generated from an ISA practical to enable you to calculate certain values. The example I'm going to use is uh, in the ISA where you have to use VI curves to determine the resistance of an unknown resistor. What you do is you change the potential difference across that resistor and measure the current through that resistor and when you plot the IV curve in the, of that, you are able to work out what the resistance is. And I'm going to talk through the steps you would do to enable you to calculate it. So the first thing you should know is from GCSE that the equation of a straight line is always of the form y equals mx plus c. If you did not remember that, I've now told you. There you go. It's in the form of y equals mx plus c. So... To apply this to different equations that you'll meet in the science practicals, you need to be able to rearrange other equations into y equals mx plus c format. So in the, this ISA I'm using this example, we're going to be using Ohm's law because we've got potential difference, we've got the current, and we want to find resistance. So we need to rearrange that into a form where it's in y equals mx plus c. So remember that we changed the potential difference, so potential difference is going to be x, and we measured the current, so that's going to be our y. So we need to rearrange it so we end up with i on the left, v on the right, multiplied by some variable. So if we rearrange v equals ir, so we've got v equals ir, we rearrange it by dividing by both sides by r, and we get into this form here, so i equals 1 over r dot v plus 0. Now you might be wondering why I haven't just written that as v over r. It's simply so we can actually identify specifically what m is, what specifically x is, and what specifically c is. And obviously c in this case is 0. So what this is telling you is if you calculate the gradient of your IEV graph, then if you do 1 over it, that will tell you what the resistance is. And some of you might be sitting there thinking, well, why don't we just plot a VI curve, because then it would just be the gradient and it would be a lot easier. That's just all about a scientific convention. And scientific convention says you always put the independent variable on the x-axis, the dependent on the y-axis, and you always have to follow that. So scientists know if they read your experiment papers or whatever, what you've changed and what you've measured. That's just convention, and that's something you just have to do if you're a member of the scientific community. So no shortcuts here, I'm afraid. So let's have a look at this in more. Some of you might also be wondering, why don't we bother calculating the gradient at all? Why don't we just pick a point and calculate r from that point? Well, the problem with doing it from just one point is you've got uh, an answer, but how do you know if that's reliable? Is someone else going to be able to repeat it and get the same answer? If you haven't got enough information to give a good estimate of what resistance is from just one piece of data. So the next logical step is, well, well, why don't we just take two points and then take an average? And you, well, I mean, that's better, because by taking the average, you'll get a more accurate answer to your calculation of R. But then the next logical step is, well, if we had three points, wouldn't it be even more accurate? And continuing that logic further, if we have n points, wouldn't it be more accurate if we had n plus one points? And the answer is yes. So by following that logic through, we actually need to use infinite points to calculate R. And obviously, having only taken seven, we don't have infinite points, so we can't get our most accurate guess of R. But if we plot those points and draw a line of best fit, calculating the gradient of that line of best fit is the equivalent of calculating R for every single point on that line, which is an infinite number of points. So what you've effectively done is calculated the resistance for an infinite number of points, so you've got the most accurate guess at R that you could have. So that's why we calculate the gradient of the line. So let's have a look at the example. So this is the set of data I actually used in the other video about the ISA practical skills. So let's have a look at using this to calculate R. So we're remembering that r is equal to 1 over the gradient, okay? So first of all, we have to work out what the gradient is. Now, you should remember that to calculate the gradient, it's your change in your, in this case, current, because that's on your y-axis, 
over your change in the potential difference, which in this case is on the x-axis. And the important thing to remember is that what AQA says on this is that you need to have a triangle with 8 centimeters minimum on, the, on its side. So you need to use a large section of this graph and generate a large triangle to calculate your gradient from. So on this I'd advise you to pick points which are nicely situated. So if we have a look here, this one is fairly nice. Actually I spotted a better one up here. If we take this point here, that's quite good because that nice smack on a joint so you can get nice easy readings from that and then if you go to the bottom here we've got another point here now with these graphs it's bad scientific practice to use zero zero as one of your points so I would encourage you not to do so so what we need to do is if we draw out a triangle this is gonna be a little bit difficult uh, but I'll give it a go hey a triangle um, so what we need to do is calculate the lengths of these sides. So let's have a look at the coordinates of this one up here. We need to know the coordinates of this one here and the coordinates of this one here, and that will allow us to work out the sides. So let's just find those now. Ah, there we go, some coordinates. And the last thing to do is then work out what the lengths of your sides are. So in the, so we want to know the length of this, the height of the triangle, so it's going to be, so delta i is going to be 72 minus 12, it's going to give you 60 milliamps, remember it's in milliamps, and the length of this side here is going to be, so delta p t is going to give you 4.8 minus 0.8, it was four, and it's important to show you're working for this, so you can show where your answers are coming from. So let's calculate your gradient now. It's going to be the other change I, so 60 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 4, which I reckon gives you 1.5 times 10 to the minus 2, which means your resistance is going to be which is equal to 66.7 ohms is your resistance there. So key things, make sure you check your units and your axes in case you need to convert from milliamps to amps, that sort of thing. And making sure you show where all the numbers are coming from. So actually showing where your delta i's come from and where your delta pd's come from. And making sure the sides of this triangle here are longer than 8 centimetres. So that's not the long one, that's... Both of the short ones need to be greater than 8 centimetres, and you will have successfully calculated something from your graph.